Okay, everyone, welcome back to our uh, lecture over the digestive and urinary system. Um, so this is going to be a very quick rundown of the digestive and urinary system. Um, remember, you can always refer back to our supplementary information um, if you want to get a little more information over these particular subjects. So the digestive system, as you know, um, you take in food, you break that food down, um, and then you're going to get rid of that food um, in the form of solid waste or liquid waste, as fe or sorry, uh, solid waste as feces. The urinary system, on the other hand, um, is going to eliminate the liquid forms of waste. Um, so things like ammonia, things like urea, and things like that, uh, liquids are going to be filtered um, by the kidneys, blood and condensed down into urine, and you're going to excrete that through the bladder. Um, so super, super important. These two things work together to help eliminate um, and process food waste. So nutrients are broken down um, by the digestive system um, to help maintain homeostasis in the body. So when you get hungry, um, your body tells you that you need to eat more so you can up the amount of nutrients in your bloodstream so everything can be fed. Fairly easy to figure that one out. Um, these are the organs that make up the digestive system, and they all work together to deliver nutrients to the blood, uh, which is eventually going to be fed to the rest of the body. Um, the circulatory system is going to work to give, via the blood, um, all of those nutrients to the rest of the body. The kidneys um, are also going to work to help maintain homeostasis of the body fluids. They're going to um, filter out waste products, um, things like that. Um, so when the body needs to adjust the amount of uh, nitrates that found in the blood, it's going to tell the, the uh, body to filter more uh, or up the amount of urea and things like that. Um, more water, less water, more electrolytes, less electrolytes in the blood to help regulate those particular uh, systems. So there's lots of different types of digestive systems out there. Um, they all vary based on the type of environment that organisms are found in and what they need to do. Um, so birds are a very interesting thing. Um, they have very simplistic digestive systems. It's extremely effective, though. Uh, it's one of the most effective digestive systems on the planet um, because they have to be able to secrete all their waste products uh, and digest things very effectively in not a lot of space and also has to not weigh a lot because they have to be able to fly. Um, this bird, if he didn't have to fly, could weigh a lot more uh, for his body size, but since he has to fly, he has to not weigh a lot, so the things inside of him have to not weigh a lot, which makes sense. Um, so birds are very uh, interesting case study of that. So um, you're probably familiar with heterotrophs and autotrophs, the difference uh, between those two. We are heterotrophs, birds are heterotrophs. We eat food to um, main, get our energy. We bring in uh, nutrients from the outside and break it down inside of us. Um, however, autotrophs use the sun um, and organic molecules to make their own food. So. Uh, the nutrients inside of those foods, you, uh, you're probably familiar with this one as well, um, are broken down via metabolism for growth, maintenance, and repair of the body, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, waters, vitamins, stuff like that. You're probably familiar with all of this stuff. So um, all of the energy that's stored in that food is stored in the form of potential energy. The bonds are then broken apart to release the stored energy inside of it. Um, and then those energy can then be released to power things in the body and the uh, particles that are broken apart can then be used to build up and break down um, other things inside the body as well. So uh, super useful to eat. That's why we have to eat. Um, if you're an endothermic animal like us, we have to eat more food to regulate our body temperature. A lot of that food is just going to go to power our body just being warm. Uh, via an ectotherm, which is an animal that just regulates its heat via the environment, they only have to eat once every once uh, once every couple of months to maintain their uh, their their life. Um, they don't need to maintain their body heat, so they don't they get it from the sun from the uh, the environment. Whereas we have to constantly burn fuel to make ourselves warm. They do not have to, so we have to constantly eat. They don't. Um, Makes sense if you think about it. When you're growing up, you are building more cells, uh, getting larger, so it takes more energy. That's why little tiny animals and babies and things have to be fed constantly because they're growing. So you have to be able um, to get more nutrients that you need. Um, so they're constantly hungry. Macro micronutrients. You're probably familiar with this concept as well. Micronutrients, things that you require large amounts of to make yourself work. Water, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids. The four things, the, uh, the three, uh, three of the four biological molecules, DNA being one of them. You don't, yeah, you make DNA, you don't eat it. Um, you can, but anyway, um, water, you have to maintain your uh, fluids and things. Um, you have to have these in large amounts to make yourself live. 
vitamins, minerals, things that work as cofactors for the immune system. You don't really need a ton of those. Um, so you just need a little bit of that in your diet to maintain a healthy uh, uh, body balance. Now here's different vitamins, what they do, where you get them, um, and then what they're used for inside of the body, and then what happens if you don't have enough of them. Here's what happens with minerals, same thing. Um, body weight generally overall is going to reflect a level of food intake versus your activity level. Um, so you have to have a healthy intake of food and a healthy activity level for the most part to maintain um, a healthy body weight. And now there are metabolic conditions and other things like that that can break this apart. The BMI here is an extremely outdated way to measure body weight um, and healthy. Uh, so I'm not going to really talk about that. <clears throat> The state of starvation is when you don't get enough calories to maintain your life. Um, there's forced uh, starvation, which are uh, people that are in famine conditions. Um, their, their countries are in civil war, things like that, and they don't have enough food, and they don't have a choice where they can or can't get food. And then there's sometimes chosen um, starvation, which is uh, anorexia, nervosa, bulimia, and things, which is a self-limitation of food intake. Um, so they're forced at an underweight calorie, and it forces their body to burn off muscles and fat and things like that that it normally wouldn't be burning. Um, so these are two different types. This little kid here has a belly full of parasite, parasitic worms, which is why he looks like this. It's not because he's full. Um, these are all parasitic worms, which are not helping the fact that he's starving. Um, so obesity is too many calories for the amount of uh, exercise that you do. Um, so if you eat more than you burn, uh, your body's going to store the excess, and if you eat too much, eventually your body's going to store way too much of it, and it's going to take uh, way more f fuel intake to keep this giant body burning, so you're going to have to eat more food, which your body's going to store, so you're constantly hungry. Um, it's, a, it's a compounding cycle. Um, so sometimes uh, hormonal deficiency can cause uh, obesity to occur where people are constantly hungry and animals are constantly hungry. This is what happened to this poor mouse. Um, they altered his brain to make him uh, deficient in a particular hormone, which tells him that he uh, doesn't need to eat, that he's full. I mean, he's constantly hungry, even though he's constantly eating. So he just eats and eats and eats and eats and eats, even though he's full. Um, so different types of animals have different types of digestive tracts. Makes sense if you think about it. You have to be able to process what you eat. If you're a plant eater, you have to be able to break down cellulose, which usually involves bacteria and some other sort of enzymes. Um, the bacteria have, a, have to have a place to live, so you have, your stomach has to have a specialized place for them um, and things like that. Meat eaters, uh, you don't have to worry about this problem, so plants are not a big deal. Um, so you have to be able to break down bones, and you have your stomach acid has to be very strong, and things like that. And then there's animals in the middle, which can do both sometimes. Um, animals that drink liquid diets, blood, and things like that, the way that their system works is totally different. Filter feeders over here, they eat little tiny organisms, have to be able to filter them out of water, things like that. So different types of organisms eat different types of things. Um, they have different types of digestive tracts to allow them to break down what they eat. So acquiring nutrients is a four-step process. Ingestion, bringing food in. Digestion, breaking that food down. There's th two ways to digest things, mechanical or chemical. Mechanical, chewing it, breaking it down into little pieces in your mouth. Then chemical, breaking it down in your stomach via enzymes, things like that, to smaller and smaller pieces. Um, saliva does that, things like that, in your stomach acid. Then there's the absorption st uh, stage where you absorb the actual nutrients in the food, the whole point of breaking it down, getting the good stuff out. And then there's elimination where you get rid of it. Um, fairly easy to figure these out, not that difficult to figure out where they occur, uh, what's going on with each. So sometimes there's something called intracellular digestion, which is completed inside of the cells. Um, so these little guys here, like sponges, um, if you recall back from our sponge lecture, they, uh, they eat this food very strange. They suck it inside of their body um, and break it down on the inside. There's extracellular digestion on the other form, um, where uh, cells break down things on the outside of their body um, and bring it in. So digestive tracts and complete and complete digestive tracts. We've already gone over this before. Uh, diet influences digestive tract structure. Makes perfect sense if you think about it. Imagine that for animals that eat plants, like this little reindeer here, you have to have different compartments for fermentation, for bacteria to live, for different enzymes and things to break down cellulose to be found and stuff like that, which is in their stomach. Um, carnivore down here, cecums helps break down the extracellulose and things like that. Um, our wolf down here eats meat, doesn't eat plants, doesn't have to worry about all those compartments. So he has a really tiny um, 
stomach, doesn't have to worry about all those compartments, very reduced cecum, doesn't have to worry about holding a lot of uh, bacteria to break down cellulose, so it doesn't really have to worry about that. Um, different types of tissue in the nervous system all run together. Epithelial tissue lines the whole thing on the inside, strong, uh, very hard to break through, which is why it's there. Connective tissue, blood, things like that help uh, line the uh, digestive tract, keep everything in place. Muscle tissue helps move all the food along. Nervous tissue helps tell everybody that you're hungry or not hungry, um, when to start digestion and things like that, when to uh, help eliminate waste. Uh, the different organs of the uh, digestive system, you can see in here, fairly easy to figure that one out. Smooth muscles line the digestive tract, so this is the concept of peristalsis uh, down here. Um, it's a rhythmic contraction, pushes food through your stomach. Uh, it's essentially like the concept of grabbing a, a tube and then running your finger down it and pushing the stuff through. Um, this is how your, your intestines work. You can't control this. This is how your esophagus works as well. You cannot control this reaction. It is a smooth muscle. Um, you have no control over it. Um, muscles control sphincters, which open and close gaps. So the food that's in your stomach, is, if it's not digested yet, obviously you don't need to let it in the small intestine. So you have a sphincter here, a, a hole open and close, a little valve that's open and closed by muscles to keep the food in or out of where it needs to be um, when it's not ready is or isn't ready to be there. And the same thing at the top. So if you eat this food, you don't need to put it in your stomach yet. Your sphincter is going to open up and let it in um, instead of just letting air in. So uh, that's what these things do. They control things going in and out. Digestion starts in the mouth. It makes sense if you think about it. You chew it, break things down into smaller pieces. Teeth do different things. Crush, grind, tear. Um, you have saliva, which also helps break things down as well. The, if you hit your stomach, you have muscles in there which crunch and turn and grind things together, um, all the enzymes, the digestive acids and stuff in there um, that break down the rest of your food. So it goes from there, it's going to go into the small intestines, pass all the little villi of your small intestines, they're going to absorb all the nutrients. Uh, remember if you want this in high, uh, super, super, super high depth, you can uh, check back in in our um, supplemental activities. So this is the villi here. They essentially line the walls of the intestines. This right here, you can see them, the smooth columnar cells. Um, and the um, food's going to pass right through them. They're going to absorb the food, the nutrients from that stuff as it passes through. Um, different enzymes are going to be added to help break down fats, to help break down starches, to help break down things like that. Um, you're going to have to neutralize stomach acid so it doesn't eat up your intestines. So you're going to have to add some, uh, some bases and things like that to help break down the food and keep you from uh, eating up your own digestive stomach walls with stomach acid and things like that. So lots of different things are going to be added along the way. You can see here what's added, where it's added from, what it does. Um, and then the last step, absorption, or sorry, uh, elimination of the last step, absorption occurs in the large intestines and the small intestines where water is going to be removed, um, ions, minerals, and things like that from the food as it passes along through the way. Um, and then the small intestines are going to help complete uh, the rest of that process. Um, so really easy to figure this one out. You eat the food, it goes in your stomach, it's broken down, it's absorbed, and then it's gotten rid of along the way. The food is broken down, the nutrients are taken out here, and then the leftover nutrients, that are, that are the junk that's left over after the nutrients has been removed is excreted through the anus. Um, nitrogenous waste for us is the concept of um, uh, urine. Um, so uh, it comes from eating proteins. When we break down proteins, we produce ammonia. Uh, so anything that has proteins in it, meats, uh, nuts, cheese, things like that, have uh, an ammonia group in them, an amino group right here, the H2HN, um, NH2. Um, so they, it's, it's uh, broken away from an amino acid that makes up the protein part, forms ammonia, and then we secrete that ammonia as urea in our urine. Um, so different animals secrete uh, the the excuse me, uh, the different type of environment that you live in is going to help uh, determine the amount of water that uh, waste or that helps dilute your urine um, and how effective your urine is. So humans, we don't live in a really desert environment for the most part, so we can afford to spend a lot of our water um, on diluting our urine. Whereas this kangaroo rat over here lives in the um, desert, he has to spend a lot more of his water. <laughs> he can't afford to spend a lot of his water um, on urine. He needs to save a lot more of it. So his, his uh, kidneys work a lot better 
like filter it, filtering out waste because they just have to because you can't afford to dilute things down than ours because we have a lot more diluted urine. Um, so it's very interesting how cells can regulate this process and different animals evolved to be able to uh, regulate their ion intake and things through the kidneys. Um, the urinary system does lots of things. It filters the blood, it, uh, gets the toxins and stuff out of the blood, uh, junk out of the blood from the body, um, eliminates nitrogenous waste that's built up, helps maintain the ion concentration in the body by regulating salts and things like that. Um, and it's going to help store the urine uh, that's produced by the urine, the junk that's filtered out of everything. Um, so the kidneys are going to be the filtering organs. Um, they're going to cleanse everything you can see here through the blood. You can see where the blood comes in. The kidneys are going to filter the blood, go right back out. Um, and then all the junk that's filtered out is going to be sent down through the little ureters, stored in the bladder, um, and then secreted through the urethra out. So there's a lot of water, uh, there's a lot of urea, and there's a lot of toxins and a lot of minerals in, I in uh, urine, which is why it conducts electricity. It's very salty. Um, so a lot of water to dil dilute down the urea so it doesn't burn the walls of your bladder and burn a hole through everything. Same with the toxins, so it doesn't burn up everything, which is why if you've ever had a bird poop on your car, it burns off the paint. They have very concentrated um, urine or the feces. They have one. They don't. They don't have. Uh, they don't do both. They do one. The white part is the feces. The white part's the urine. It's combined into one. Um, which is why it melts the paint off of your car because it's super concentrated urea. So if we had that inside of us, it would burn through the hole of your bladder. So we dilute it all down with water. Um, their bodies were built to take it. Ours are not. Um, so different here, the different types of tissues, once again, make up the urinary tract, the urinary system. You can see here where they are and what they do. Nephrons are the filtering agent of the kidneys. Um, you can check out the supplemental video if you want to figure out how these things work. So hormones help regulate the functions of the kidney. Um, the kidneys see if there's too much stuff in the urine, they're going to say, hey, we need to get more water, to, um, filter less, and vice versa. If there's not enough, we need to secrete more, blah, 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 things like that. Um, so if you don't have working kidneys, you can go through a dialysis mach machine, which is going to filter out the uh, blood for you um, where your kidneys don't work. So it's a fake process, uh, an artificial process, I should say, to maintain um, healthy balance when your kidneys don't work. So that's pretty much all that's going on with these chapters. Um, don't forget, you can check out your supplemental activities if you want a little more deep dive into these subjects. Um, if not, this is about all I've got for these. Have a great rest of your day.